واذكروا كذلك ما تعلق بالحياة والنفاس. And then in the chapter of al-tahara, purification, they also mention those things which relate to uh, menstruation and leading you to pregnancy. نبدأ بإذن الله تعالى بالطهارة الحسية كما ذكرنا أن الطهارة الحسية تكون إما طهارة بدن أو طهارة إما طهارة من حدث أكبر أو أصغر أو طهارة للبدن البقعة الثوب نعم. We begin by now mentioning the purification which is physical physical purification and as we mentioned This can either be purification from a major form of impurity or a minor form of impurity in Hadith al and Hadith al-Asqar or it can also be a person purifying the place that he's painting or, or purifying his clothing or, or purifying his body. Uh, ablution. So ablution al wudu It has certain conditions that we have to fulfill. Therefore, the first condition of wudu, of ablution, is that which we have just said, a person purifying his inside. If a person who is a person of shirk akbar, the major form of shirk and then he makes the perfect ablution his wudu is still not accepted we have a person for example who insults and swears to the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he makes wudu his wudu is not accepted and also The second condition of ablution is al a person having sound intelligence. And therefore, if a person who is insane or he has a mental, he's mentally disabled and he makes wudu, then his wudu is not accepted. And more than this, if a person who is drunk with alcohol or intoxicated, he makes wudu, then similarly his wudu is not accepted. <laughs> وهو التفريق بين الأشياء فإذا كان لدينا ولد صغير وتوضع هذا الصغير هل هو صحيح؟ ننظر إذا كان يفرق بين الأشياء تقول له اجلس اجلس تعال يأتي يعرف السؤال والجواب ويعرف من هذا ما وهذا ما هو ضوء صحيح ولا هو ضوء باطل نعم and then the third condition of ablution of wudu is التمييز meaning The small child being at an age whereby he can differentiate between different matters. So if we have a child now and he performs wudu and we want to know that is this child's wudu ablution accepted or not, correct or not, then we see. We ask him, is he at the age whereby he can distinguish between different things? If we tell him to sit, he comes and sits. If we tell him to stand, he stands. He distinguishes between water, he distinguishes between fire, for example. If he can do this and he has reach the age of the Tamiz, whereby he can distinguish between these various things, then his evolution is correct and accepted. And the fourth condition from the conditions of wudu is an intention. So we said regarding the intention, does this mean therefore that when a person makes wudu, he has to say that I am intending to make this wudu with this water in the city of Sheffield on this date in order to pray the prayer behind Sheikh Muhammad with the timing of Sheffield which is 10 past 5, is this what it means? No. No. And need to have Rather the intention its place is in the heart. What 
تلفظ بهذا النعم في كل العبادات على ما سبت معنا بإذن الله تعالى. And therefore pronouncing or saying the intention upon the tongue, this is now a bid'ah and innovation. And this is the same in all of the different acts of worship. إذا النية محل قلب التلفظ بها بدعة على الشرط الرابع من شروط الوضع. So therefore the fourth condition is النية a person's intention and the place of a person's intention is in the heart and to pronounce the intention upon the tongue is an innovation. ثم لا بد أن هذه النية تكون من أول الوضوء إلى نهاية الوضوء لا ينوي قطع نية الوضوء في وسط الوضوء. نعم. And a person has to have this intention from the beginning of his wudu all the way throughout and to the end of the wudu. So a person doesn't break his intention or break the intention of wudu throughout his ablution. ثم بعد هذا من شروط الوضوء لا بد من انقطاع موجب الوضوء لا يصح أن يتوضع مثلا وهو يأكل لحم جزو. And also from the conditions of ablution is that when a person is performing wudu, then those things which necessitate wudu have to, has to stop. So for example, it's not correct for a person to make wudu and whilst he's making wudu he's eating the meat of a camel. And also the next condition of ablution is 
a person removing from his body anything which prevents the water touching his skin or reaching his body or reaching those limbs. So, for example, if a person is working and he has, on him, let's say, some cement, for example, because he's working, or some plastic because he's working, or some dough due to cooking, then before making wudu, you have to remove these things in order for the water to touch your skin. Once we have completed the conditions of wudu that we have just mentioned, now we will talk about the obligations of wudu. So the obligations of wudu, those things which we have to do during ablution are six. A person has to wash his face along with rinsing his mouth and his nose. A person has to wash his hands all the way to and including the elbows. A person has to wipe over his head and his ears. And a person has to wash his feet up to and including his ankles. And then the next condition is that a person has to do this in the sequence or the order which the Prophet used to do it. And also the last condition, the sixth, the sixth obligation of wudu is that when a person is making his ablution, then he does one limb straight after the other limb and he doesn't leave too much time between washing each limb. And this is most of the case in the summer. Because in the summer, if you wash one limb and then you leave a bit of time, it dries. And therefore, a person has to wash each limb straight away immediately after the other limb. Not other wudu. And then the next thing we need to understand are the nawaqat of wudu, those things which break or invalidate a person's wudu. Al kharij min al sabilayn mutlaqa. Kharij min al kubul, or min al dubul, so on kan daka or min unta. Kul kharij min al sabilayn wa na kul wudu. Anything which comes out from a person's private parts, from the front or the back, whether it's a male or a female, anything which is discharged from a person's private parts, then this invalidates and breaks a person's wudu. Dawul or ghaad. So whether this is urine or feces, or reh, or passing of wind, or hasa, or it is hasa, or if it is like very small stones, or uh, or if it's like um, yeah, small worms or small insects, or it is blood, whether it is the blood of menstruation or postnatal, postnatal bleeding or any type of blood. Any discharge, anything which is discharged from a person's private part, then this invalidates and breaks a person's evolution. And also if urine it is discharged from a place other than its private parts. Some people they have a particular illness whereby they have a back hair and urine comes out of there. This then breaks a person's evolution. Now and then the next invalidate of wudu, the next action which might which invalidates a person's evolution is for a person to lose his consciousness. A person he loses his consciousness or his intellect. This can either be a person sleeping or a person who becomes insane, a person who becomes intoxicated. Or a person again who using who uses intoxications or drugs, meaning that a person reaches a state whereby he doesn't know whether something is being discharged from his body. Now, 
sleeping, our sukkah, intoxication, our, uh, irma, our passing, being conscious of fainting, our uh, and again, if a person is given any type of anesthetic or medicine which makes his lose, which makes him lose his consciousness. And now so and not sleeping in itself, it is not great because it's not sleeping in itself. But when a person sleeps, then there's a strong probability that maybe he has passed away. 